gallon of water. John chapter 6. We're spending quite a bit of time in John chapter 6. As we go through the book of John, sometimes I will do that because of the subject matter uh, that's in there. I'm not trying to actually preach verse by verse per se through the book of John, but at the same time, uh, I'm trying to get the goodies out of it. Amen. So we're going to look again at uh, our Lord over here. Let me get this swapped over here. Get this over here on this side. Amen. I want to read starting in verse number 28. And I'm going to read down through verse number 41 uh, tonight. Then said they unto him. Boy, he, he told them, he said, you know, you, you, you don't seek me because you want me. They, you seek me because of the miracle of the loaves. And that's the miracles. That's, notice what he says here. You did eat the loaves and were filled. He said, labor not for the meat which perisheth, but that meat which endureth unto everlasting life which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath the God, a God the Father sealed. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he has sent. They said unto him, What signs showest thou then? We dealt with that this last week, that we may see and believe thee. What Dost thou work? So they asked for something to be seen. Uh, they didn't want to take Christ at His word. They wanted His word plus something. We call that extra biblical re revelation. Uh, it's Christ plus something. So they said, what sign show us us? Before He could say anything, look what they said in verse 31. Our fathers did eat manna in the desert as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not the bread from, that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. Boy, does that remind you of somebody? John chapter number four, the woman at the well. He said, if you'd asked, I'd have given you water and you would have never thirsted again. She said, give me the water. Now, he said, if I gave you the bread that gives life, and they said, Lord, give us the bread. Now, notice what Jesus said. Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. Now, for the next couple of weeks, again, I'm going to deal with that, that phrase, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. He that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the will, the Father's will, which hath sent me that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise him up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Look at verse 41. And the Jews murmured at him, because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, who father and mother we know? How is it then that he saith, I came down from heaven? And I'm going to look at that phrase tonight again. I am uh, the bread of life. After seeing the miracles that Christ did, they asked to see something on top of that. They had forgotten what he did. He took five loaves and two fishes and fed thousands of people. There were probably fifteen to 20,000 or more people that he fed that day. And at the end of the day, he had 12 baskets of fragments left. These are pretty good sized baskets. And they loaded up 12 of those when they started out with less and he fed the thousands. Now, when he said that, they introduced him to something that Moses, they said, had done, all right? They, they talked about Moses giving them that 
bread or feeding them. All right, look at verse 31. Our fathers did eat man in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. They just left the Lord feeding the multitudes. Then they told him, God or Moses actually gave us that bread that came down from heaven. Now you go back to that and it's what they called manna. Uh, but I, I want to look at that bread that came down, that manna for a few minutes. The word bread, it's normally we understand what bread is. In the Bible, it can also be used as a metaphor. There are a lot of metaphors in the Bible. Jesus said, I am the bread of life, all right? He wasn't actually a loaf of bread, but he was that staff that was going to feed them into everlasting life. Uh, but as you go back through it, what I did, I just kind of looked at uh, the word bread for a little bit tonight. You know, the bread is called the staff of life. If you look up staff of life, just type, type it into a search engine, it'll, the first thing it'll do is bring up bread. When I think of a staff, I think of something that is rigid, that holds things up. Uh, out here, we've got a staff out here that holds up the American flag. Uh, if it's on a ship, it's, it's called a mast. But when it's on uh, the ground as this one is, then it's a staff that holds it up. So bread is what's called the staff of life because it's, it's a very basic food that supports our life. In the world, bread is vast and varied with some form of bread found in virtually every society. If you left here, went to Mexico, if you went on down to Central America, South America, if you went to the Middle East, everywhere you go, they've got bread of some type. I remember in Germany, the hard German bread that they had over there. The very, they're hard, but boy, you're talking about some good bread. They used to slice that and put horseradish mustard in it and put a bratwurst in that thing and hand it to you wrapped up and ready to go bread. Boy, bread, a staff of life. So it's very important. The Israelites had named this bread from heaven manna. The word manna means whatness. Isn't that interesting? Whatness. Uh, they, somebody told me that over in Germany, the little windows that are on the doors, you know, that, that the Germans uh, first named that Was ist das? That means, what is that? What is this? Was ist das? All right. When they first time they saw them, they went to France when they took over France and saw windows and doors, and they couldn't figure out why in the world anybody want to put a window in the door. Somebody, somebody can look into your living room. Uh, so they call it this. They called that manna. Manna means whatness because they didn't know what it was when God sent that down. The word bread is found 361 times in your Bible. Often it's used typically or as a metaphor for spiritual life. But the first mention of bread is found in Genesis 3. So I want to hold your hand there and turn over to Genesis 3. So we're going to go back six thousand years in history. Genesis chapter number 3. We find in Genesis 3, everybody understands the context of this. Uh, Adam sinned. Eve, his wife, sinned with him. Uh, they were separated from God. When you get to the latter part of, of the uh, chapter, you get into God dealing with uh, with the judgment that went along with that. I want you to look at verse number 19. First mention of bread. And the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. The first mention of bread establishes the importance of this thing. He could have said you're going to have to do a whole lot of things. You know, in the beginning, uh, God gave them uh, uh, food. He gave them all the fruit they wanted. You go over to chapter number two, and he gave them the herbs. Uh, he created everything in six days. By the way, God created nothing after six days. He completed that work. That means every animal, every bird, every fish, Every plant, every tree, everything had been made. So in that, they found their food. 
they could have anything they wanted. They could have any of the fruit of the garden other than the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But I find in this verse that they probably had bread. You know, we don't often think about them preparing meals. But from what he said here, he said from this day forward, listen to chapter number uh, 3, verse 19, in the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread. He went on and talked about that they would have to till the ground now because the ground would not give them the harvest automatically. That lends me to think that Adam and Eve probably made bread. Everything was there. They didn't have to plant, didn't have to till the ground. They didn't have to do anything but pluck the fruit. But bread was something God didn't have to explain to them. God gave him no explanation in here of what bread is, which, and I'm not going to make a doctrine, but it leads me to believe that they probably ate a little bit more than we think they did it, that they were all vegetarian until they got, uh, Noah got off of the ark. But at the same time, everything in that garden, everything that was made was food, the herbs of the field and everything else. But the first use of this is an important one. The first mention of bread in the Bible, God didn't have to explain anything. So we find over in Genesis chapter 1, verse 29, let me just read what God said. God said, For every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. So God gave them everything they needed, according to Genesis chapter number 1. So I believe that they probably took this, hey, cooked whatever they did. I'm not talking about they labored hard to get anything, folks. Uh, but I believe that they possibly ate bread. But in the first mention, he said that fr from now on, he said that you're going to have to uh, work. You're going to have to till that ground until the day we come. So he said, in the sweat of thy face, thou shalt return uh, under the ground. And he said, hey, you're going to have to work for it. Over in Matthew chapter number four, we read this quite a bit. Satan mentioned bread while tempting our Lord. Over in Matthew chapter four, when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. So he tempted the Lord with bread, but he answered and said, it is written. Now Christ answered him back, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So we find the indication here that man lives by bread physically, but he lives by the word of God spiritually. So he tied these two things together, not a physical bread. And by the way, bread is important in your diet. I found out that when people go on diets, the first thing they do, what do they cut out of their diet? Bread, all right? Bread is important in your diet. When I was in school and Barbara years ago, we used to take health classes. I don't know, they may still do that. You remember the seven different food groups and you're just supposed to have part of that group every day. I can still see the pictures of everything on there and one of the foods that was on there, basic food was bread. We talk about bread quite a bit. So when people go on a diet, the first thing they do is they take something very important to their body away from their body. Bread's good for you. You can actually live by bread. You can live on bread by itself. It actually will give you basically everything that you need. So spirit, physically, uh, they do away with bread. When they get away from the Lord spiritually, the first thing they do is remove the bread. Jesus said, I'm the bread of life. What do they do when they get away from God spiritually? They leave the bread. They leave the Word of God. They leave the presence of God out of their life and distancing themselves. So we find that in Matthew chapter number 4, Satan tempted the Lord with it. Over in Acts chapter number 2, verse number 46, we found the importance of bread and the diet of the people of the New Testament. The Bible said they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Bread was an important part of their diet. They understood what bread was. 
Bread has always been used in the Bible for our communion with Christ. Over in the Old Testament in Exodus chapter 25, they said, And thou shalt set upon the table showbread before me always. When they built the, the tabernacle, we have discussed that uh, in Sunday school, one of the articles in the holy place, you had the outer court, you had the holy place, then you had the holy of holies, the three different uh, separate places. But in the holy place within the actual tent itself, sitting on the right-hand side, you had the table of showbread. Every day they baked that bread fresh. And they kept those loaves of bread there as a type of the communion that they had with God. The priesthood ate of those loaves when they were taken off. We find how important it was in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, 1 Corinthians 11, the Lord, the Lord, hey, Paul said, For I have received of the Lord which also, that which I have also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Now, he's giving a type here, and this, he said, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. Down verse 26, he said, for as oft as you do eat this bread. So he tied bread with the body of Christ himself or a communion with God. Uh, we'll have the Lord's table here on the January the 29th on the Sunday night. That'll be a uh, week after next, and, and I thank God for that time. I, I love a time of communion. It's done in remembrance. That's what he said. You do show remembrance of the, the Lord's death. So we find the communion that we have is through the bread in type, but that bread is the body of Christ himself. So when he said, I'm the bread of life, he wasn't talking about that he was uh, part of a loaf of bread. We find that manna was very typical of Christ in seven ways. So let me just give them to you real quick. It was divine in its origin. When God sent that manna, he rained that manna from, he uh, from heaven. I, I remember so vividly the message, Can God, that Dr. Seitler preached uh, so many years ago. I think it's Psalm chapter 78, Can God. The Bible talked about that the people ate angels' food. And it gave a description of that food there. You go back to manna, the origin of that food, God gave that to them. And by the way, He fed them for 40 years. Forty years they ate that manna, that whatness. What is this? They had to work. They had to go out. They had to gather so much a day. Then on the sixth day of the week, they gathered double. They, they ate that bread that God gave. It was divine in its origin. It's a type of the deity of Christ. When God gave Jesus Christ, you go back, I am the bread of life over in the book of John, he was Almighty God Himself that came down from heaven. It's hard for people to understand, and a lot of people don't really grasp that. I don't think that you and I do to some degree. Again, it's hard to understand who God is. I told somebody the other day, I believe that God is, and He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. He's an eternal being. But at the same time, when Christ came down, God came down in that flesh. So that manna that fed them in the wilderness, it was typical of that Son of God that came down from heaven and, and came down and, and, and brought eternal life. He came down from heaven, sent from God. John three sixteen. For God so loved the world. You ever wondered why God lets the world go like He does? Boy, the patience of God, the long-suffering of God tonight, not just with America, but I'm talking about with the world in general. I would have thought by 2023 we would have been out of here and gone. And yet God in His grace and God in His mercy continues to be long-suffering to this world. Thank God some people are still going to get saved even in our day. I believe we're in the gleaning days. 
I believe these are uh, days when people's hearts are so hardened against God at an early age. Uh, they, they, they don't want gospel tracts anymore. Thank God for South Carolina. You can give them out here, but I, I, I've, I've gone up north, and I mean, they, they look at you and just tell you, that no, thank you, I don't want one. We were in Lowe's the other day. Barbara and I were in there looking at something. There was a man that came down to help us get something up top. You know, he brought one of the big step ladders, rolled it up there, and when he got done, he was very gracious, but I could tell that he was from up north. Tell about the way he spoke. And I handed him a gospel track and he just looked and said, no, thank you. And turned around. I mean, just that blunt. He just, no, thank you. And turned around and walked off. God is so long suffering tonight. And yet he sent his son to die for that individual and die for the world. That manna was a type of, of physical life. But Jesus Christ is a type of spiritual life. Salvation is only in Christ. It's in Christ and Christ alone. You can't add anything to the grace of God. You can't take anything away from the grace of God. It's simply Jesus Christ and Christ alone. That's why when they rejected the miracle that he did, but they talked about that manna. He said, God gave you something better than manna. He gave you the Son of God. Manna was very small in its size. The Bible said like a coriander seed. It speaks of the humility of Christ. You know, he could have been born a king, but he wasn't born a king. Uh, I sometimes wonder what England's going to do now uh, when Queen Elizabeth, with Queen Elizabeth gone. Let me tell you, the uh, structure uh, of, of uh, their uh, Buckingham Palace and everything, let me tell you, that it's wavering up there all the way around. Now, that woman was almost like the one who was uh, the head of the government for so long they called her the Iron Lady. I wonder sometime, a hey, Jesus Christ, born in humility, born in Nazareth. They even said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? They said, we know the family you came out of. They were poor, hardworking people. When Christ was born, he humbled himself. Later, he humbled himself and became obedient to the death of the cross, according to Philippians chapter number two. So we find the size was his humility. Then the Bible said it was round in shape, which speaks of his eternality. The eternality of God. An amazing thing, God always was. God always is. God always will be. Never be a time when there was no God. Never be a time when there will not be a God in the future. And by the way, God didn't die. God didn't die. Hey, I, I like what Brother Bob Garrett preached when Dr. Seitler died. Uh, he preached up there at Tabernacle and he preached on Joshua where God told him, Moses, my servant is dead. He said, Moses died. God didn't. And I thank the Lord for that tonight, the eternality of what He's going to give them. He's going to give them something that is going to last them forever and forever and forever. If they just simply accepted Him, they'd have eternal life. Then it was white, speaks of the purity of God. I thank the Lord Christ was pure. Had a lady one time that said, even Christ wasn't perfect. Never go knocking on doors. I asked her, I said, lady, are you a sinner? Are, you know, I was witnessing to her. She said, of course I'm a sinner. Even Christ wasn't perfect. And I had to stop at that point in time and try to teach her some doctrine. <laughs> now, normally I, I don't try to give them a lot of doctrine when you're soul winning. They, they need to have enough in order to be saved. You can't just walk up somebody who's never heard the name of Christ and say, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved because they don't know who he is. But at the same time, she, she looked at me and I thought to myself, what a shame. I know of a man one time, not going to call his name, who in what he said called Christ a liar. He said that he said this, but I've got news for you. That's not the way it was. This is what took place. And I thought to myself, when you said that about Jesus Christ, you said one of two things. Either one, he's a liar, or two, he's not God and he didn't know any better. And I thought about the purity of Jesus Christ tonight. 
Here he is standing in front of them. And he said, the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven. So many times he told them who he was. That's when Pilate asked that question. He, he said, whom do they say? Who are you? He said, I, I've told you who I was. He said, I, I tell you every time I said the two words, I am. When he used those two words in the Bible, they knew exactly what he was saying because that was a name for Jehovah God. So we find the purity of Christ was found in that manner. And then it was sweet to the taste. It talked about tastes like honey on it. I, I like honey. I used to, we used to buy honey butter from the stores. Anybody ever buy those tubs of it? You can buy that. That's pretty good stuff, all right. But I'd rather mix my own. I like sorghum and butter, and I like honey and butter, butter and I mix them all up and put them on a biscuit or put them on soda crackers and eat them. It's sweet to the taste. I want to say tonight that our Lord Jesus Christ is sweet to the taste. A lot of people have never tasted Christ. I'm not talking about through the Eucharist. I'm not talking about these things. I'm talking about in a personal walking relationship with Jesus Christ. How sweet it is to walk with Him daily, every day. Listen, you ought to walk in the sweetness of Christ. He's so good to us. Thank God. Just so gentle, so loving, so kind, so compassionate, so condescending. He knows where we are. He knows what we think. He knows what we've done. God knows everything about us tonight. And it was wrapped up in that manner that they were talking about. He was sweet in his person. And then he was sufficient for every need they had. That manna fed them 40 years. To the point that they said, our soul doth loathe this light bread. You remember them making that statement? They got to the point to where they were fed up with what God was feeding them. I think God should have put them on a diet for a little while. Just put them back out eating snakes and whatever they could find out in the desert. Anybody ever ate a snake? It, 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 those saying it ain't bad. All right, and it tastes like chicken. No, it doesn't taste like chicken. Amen. But he was sufficient for everything they have. As that bread of life will keep you alive, that bread of Christ will keep you forever alive. I'm glad, thank God, once we've tasted of that, folks, hey, we, if there's anything better than being saved, it's saved forever. I thank God for eternal life. One of the largest uh, amount of people that attack a doctrine. They attack the doctrine of eternal life. I don't use the words eternal security. I don't use the wording once saved, once saved, always saved. I use the terminology eternal life. He said over in the book of John, I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Boy, what a thrill tonight to know Christ. They saw what he did, but they, they were more attentive on eating the bread than they were seeing where the bread came from. I think my amazement would have been to watch him take five loaves and two fishes in front of the whole crowd and start breaking them and giving them to the disciples and the disciples carrying them out. And the more he broke, the more he had and the bigger that thing got until now, all of a sudden he's given the disciples, they're feeding the people, but now they, hey, now there's going to be the fragments for the 12 baskets full on the other side. And they got so called up in the eating that they missed the feeding so many times a day we get caught up in the eating and we miss the feeding. Who's feeding us? Who's taking care of us? So we find in here that it was sufficient for everything. The manna through, supplied by the Lord had to be gathered every day and the bread that came down from heaven lasted forever. They had to get it every day. We've got it for an eternity when we've got it. So he introduced to him in verse number 36... I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. I believe tonight that 
when we look upon him, we need to see him and believe tonight. That song said, he's all I need, he's all I need. I thank God tonight, he's all that we need. I feel sorry for these Jews. I'm reading about uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. He, and by the way, he was quoting out of the Old Testament. Quoted out of it. Oh, in there, hey, he, he was going and taking in that book, me to places where Christ walked and where Moses was and where the children Israel were. Boy, you, what a thrill to be able to walk in that land and to know that. I, I found out that he was a graduate of MIT. He got his high school education in the United States. Then he got, he was accepted into Yale. But instead of going to Yale, he wanted to go to MIT and he went to MIT and he graduated top of his class in MIT. Boy, what a thrill. I wish that he would come to know the Jesus that we know tonight. Listen, he's got a lot of knowledge in there. They had a lot of knowledge, but they missed him. There's a reason why they missed him and we're going to look at that. But he missed him. He said, I am the bread, the staff. I am what keeps your life going for an eternity. And they said, we'll take the other. Amen. We'll stand tonight and we're going to have an invitation. Manna was typical of Christ. But they missed him. Or did they miss him? They saw him, they talked with him, they watched him. And yet they watched him through the eyes of carnality.